How do you read what is going on in Hong Kong today? Where does it leave your movement and your aims and goals? Well, a bit, um, I'm a bit emotional because uh, it's like, um, uh, well, it's uh, a, a, like a very big humiliation towards the um, uh, June 4th uh, massacre because today we need to, uh, we need to vote uh, on the uh, national anthem law. Uh, and and then uh, we have a national security law upcoming very soon. So um, it's uh, it's like a very strong reminder that uh, first uh, our our one country's two system concept is eroding. Secondly, our freedom and rights are in fact uh, being intervened by uh, not only the SAR government at the same time the Chinese government. How concerned are you that the United States has lost moral authority given the brutality that we've seen meted out to some protesters uh, in the United States and, in fact, some journalists as well? To what extent has that weakened the support that the US may have been able to give you and other supporters of democracy in Hong Kong? Well, this is, of course, there are some uh, very uh, uh, this uh, kind of disturbing scene, but at the same time, I understand that the movement in uh, in U.S. Uh, in fact are uh, getting more and more uh, peaceful. But at the same time, that reminds us about the police brutality uh, back uh, last year, since uh, June um, last year, and uh, that is. Um, well, of course, the government uh, should take uh, good care of uh, the citizens. But at the same time, uh, it is very important for the government to take action, for example, like to investigate into the, uh, the police brutality and at the same time to remind people that and to ensure people can protest um, uh, because this is their right. Tanya, but do you think the pro-democracy camp is putting too much hope that the U.S. and foreign countries will step in? Because even if the U.S. does withdraw Hong Kong's special trading status, that ultimately does hurt Hong Kong. Well, for uh, legislators, uh, pro-democratic uh, pro, uh, pro, uh, camp, uh, we in Hong Kong, in fact, are trying our very best to raise our concerns. But, of course, uh, we have some... Um, constraints because uh, it seems that the uh, SAR government um, is not uh, holding any kind of consultation. Uh, the consultation will only be done in uh, Shenzhen and Beijing, and only uh, some uh, people will be picked by the government, for example, like the uh, president of the legislature who, uh, came fr uh, who comes from the pro-establishment camp. So uh, the government, uh, the SAR government, refused to uh, listen to the Hong Kong people. Uh, well, for the legislature in Hong Kong, we are, not, we are trying our very best, first of all, to uh, raise the local concern. But at the same time, of course, we also uh, would like to uh, uh, address uh, the uh, concerns uh, from the international community. But uh, we are not only, um, uh, well, we are putting emphasis on everywhere because uh, we do understand that uh, the international community uh, has great concern about uh, the uh, yeah. national security law. And so uh, we are trying to explain it to uh, the locals and, and um, especially regarding the, uh, the uh, possible intervention of our rights and freedoms. But you, you have some of Hong Kong's biggest companies, the likes of, of Jardine, Sun Hong Kai, Swire, Li Ka Shing, now approving this national security legislation. You know, Jardine saying in a statement that they're establishing this legal framework for safeguarding national security is very important and can actually ensure investment in Hong Kong. They're thinking that this could actually help the city stabilize and recover. Do you think the odds, Tanya, are stacked against? the pro-democracy camp now, now that we have some big Hong Kong companies, even British institutions, that are backing Beijing on this? Well, of course, I have great concern about uh, the uh, ad, a uh, full-page ad uh, published yesterday by uh, Jardine, uh, because, um, especially because uh, there, are, uh, there were lots of political pressure beforehand. It seems that um, the freedom of having 
of doing business in Hong Kong are not respected by uh, by some of the uh, very iconic figures, for example, like the former chief executive uh, um, uh, Leung Chen Ying. So I, I do believe that this is uh, some of the concerns in the business community, business sectors, because uh, suppose um, they can do business uh, uh, as long as they abide by the law. But now it seems that political affiliation and their stance are, are, are extremely critical. Whether they can do business in Hong Kong very much depends on their political stance. So this is absolutely unacceptable and, and haven't seen you know, it's unprecedented. So I think this is, uh, it will cause a lot of concern, not only locally, but also internationally. Tanya, do you regret that you and others, other pro-Democrats in Hong Kong, didn't do more earlier on to push back against the violence in Hong Kong? Do you accept that one reason why we are where we, the place where we're at now is because your movement failed to rein in the violence? Uh, I do believe that uh, for those uh, for ex in power, for example, like the chief executive as well as the law enforcement agency, should um, take a good opportunity to learn the lesson and, uh, and for example, like to respond to our five demands, uh, for example, setting up uh, an independent uh, commission of inquiry in order to address the concerns uh, and also the, um, the well, I, I would say the grief, uh, the grievances of Hong Kong people. They are in power and they, are, they should know what to do. And I do believe that they, they should understand that um, uh, by putting more, um, you know, uh, a very restrictive law couldn't improve the uh, situation in Hong Kong because we are now under a very, very critical and sensitive situation. So... Uh, more restrictive law will only make the situation worse. Would you welcome U.S. sanctions on Hong Kong? Uh, well, I don't have a full picture of the content of the national security law, and I don't think um, I'm in a position to uh, comment on uh, the affairs, the internal affairs of a U.S. government. Uh, but, uh, of course, uh, Hong Kong people do understand that any sanction would also affect our daily life and um, businesses. So uh, we'll pay attention to the progress or, or announcement of uh, a possible sanction uh, announced by the U.S. Uh, government. And, Tanya, the reality seems to be that China is not going to back off, despite the consequences it could have with the U.S. as well. If that's the case, then what is a clear, realistic way forward, then, for the pro-democracy movement? Well, very, <laughs> well, very good question, because uh, we are trying to figure out our um, uh, the future of our movement. But I believe that uh, it won't stop uh, uh, our movement. Uh, especially when, uh, when, for example, like universal suffrage uh, promised uh, under our basic law. Um, so, uh, so far, I do believe that Hong Kong people are very strong and uh, they will continue to fight for democracy. It is not for, because it is not out of self-interest, it's because it's good for Hong Kong. So uh, I don't think this kind of law will stop us. And, uh, and especially I can see the young ones, they are very, very determined. And, um, and so I'm still quite hopeful, but of course we need to understand the reality and to figure out new, uh, uh, well, new way to handle uh, the future, especially how we are going to um, uh, go forward.